Hey everybody and welcome back my name is sue and i'm from oml embroidery and over at the computer is dawn Hello. today we're going to be talking about applique specifically this fun and awesome clamshell shape i love it i've had so much fun with this this is an old traditional shape that uh i've made modern i guess is <laughs> really cute we got lots coming on coming up and i'm gonna give you guys a sneak peek so everyone's saying hello karina hello misha hello uh, hi sue i missed you well it's good to have you back misha for sure susan hello hey everyone she says um it's awesome awesome so this is the midnight kitties uh, or midnight cats i guess i want to say kitties um wall hanging that i've done and i noticed when i was doing some of these um clamshells that it, it got kind of tricky a little bit tricky to place them i did a combination of pre-cut and you know cut in place the regular you know regular applique but i wanted to talk about how we do them so today's video is going to be all about applique we will be doing a stitch along of one of these gorgeous blocks but we're going to be doing a little stitching today look at my desk oh my goodness look at my desk what do you got going on there we got applique going on there that's what we got going on there we are going to can you pull out a little bit so no i guess that's good enough no 
Um, we are going to be talking about applique. So the first thing is applique scissors. So you need a nice sharp pair of scissors. Um, it doesn't matter what kind, however, scissors designed specifically for applique work the best. They're easiest to do. So Lynn preferred this kind. So there is a little curve in it. And what that is, is so you can get the scissors into where you want. Now let me get my hoop so I can show you guys this because I've had people ask. See, there's a little indent. There's a space half an inch or something like that before you get to the hoop. So when you're trimming, you can hold your scissors at a more comfortable position like this. So even a little curve at the bottom is helpful. And if you have regular scissors, you can see it's, it's harder to get the scissors flat. So, I mean, it makes perfect sense to do that. So this makes it a whole lot easier and see how much of the scissors are touching. Whereas the other ones, it was only the little tip of it. So those are handy. Now you can have these, this kind, these are just fine. I've had these four years and it's the same thing. See the difference? See how it goes like that? So it's easier to cut. And that's why I would recommend applique scissors for sure. Now these are my Tula pink ones, which, oh man, I can't tell you how much I love them. They have the duck bill part. So what that is, pointy part, duck bill part. So when you're cutting, that this is sliding over the top so you don't wreck it. You don't want to poke it or anything like that. Um, it's personal preference, whatever you like the best. I love, these are everything to me. <laughs> I use them all the time. They're fantastic. So uh, I think the most important part is that your scissors are sharp. That's what you need. So sharp scissors, there we go. So we're going to talk pre-cut and um, cut in place and the different ways of doing that. We've got lots of ideas. So you can pre-cut your fabric on your cutter machine. We've been talking a lot about this lately. So um, that's pretty handy. Now you can pre-cut it with a backing, a fusible backing. So you just have to iron the backing on and it's easier to cut it with the backing on if you're going to do it. It's, it's a lot easier that way. We can also talk about different kinds of fabric too. Here's my pile. I've got some good ones and some not so good ones. Oh yeah, let's not forget this guy. Is it possible guy. to sharpen curved scissors? Yes. You can either take them somewhere or you can very carefully use one of the Fiskars <coughs> cutter uh, sharpeners. Scissor sharpeners is pretty easy. So here we go with pre-cut. And what we want to do for this specific shape, and you know, pretty much for any shape too, but uh, the concern is the curve. So when you're placing it down, this curve has to be right if you want a really nice, sharp, crisp, you know, line. If these are off a little bit, uh, don't worry about it. <laughs> it's going to get covered over. The idea about clamshells is that they cover over. So there's going to be a little bit. You can see doing it like that. The only part that really shows is this. So when we're doing our placement, that's what we need to pay attention to. Now, fabric, just plain fabric, that's fine. I do notice that I get a little bit of fringe going on here, which no matter what you do is going to interfere with um, your satin stitches. 
So, yeah, for sure. Um, but it's not a big deal either. Um, another thing you can do, you can tell by the matchy matchy points here that this is a done with an AccuQuilt die and I have beautiful ombre fabric. Um, you have to cut these off because that is also going to interfere with your satin stitches, um, unless you have really mega wide satin stitches, but this is the same thing. This is probably the easiest thing to do. However, you are limited to the size of the die. So, I mean, that's, that's one thing it's convenient, but you know, it's, you're limited. Whereas if you do it on the cutter, you can cut big, small, you know, any size that you want, medium, and, and it's easy to do. So also fabric is a thing. You, the nicer fabric you have, the better it's going to look. So that's one thing. I don't even know where it went. Tammy says she has trouble picking colors. I know it takes a little while to get good at it. The kitty cat one's pretty easy though, because, um, you can, you can, Put all the colors in that's another thing I like about this shape is that anything goes if you want to do an Easter colored kitty cat one then just pick pale colors so this fabric has got like the the gold on it and it's thicker and if you notice there's hardly any uh, unraveling at it and that that works really well you can uh, applique with felt you there's so many things you can do just about anything but I've noticed the higher quality fabric or putting fabric with a batting or sorry a backing is gonna work now let's talk about placement so when you are placing the clamshells and we're going to do a couple of them just to practice trying to get everything straight is fine now if you're just doing it with fabric it can move by the time you get it back on the hoop and I do suggest that you take the hoop out and do it this way so you can see to make sure you get this part and this part the parts that are furthest um, away Excuse me. So it's super handy to have this kind of stuff on the back. So this is um, not going to work. <laughs> there we go. This, you can see, I've talked about this before. It's from Dime and it's called Fuse and Stick. So you fuse the fabric onto the back of it. And I'll show you what it looks like and which part you're working on. I'm just going to iron it down because I realized I have an iron going on. Woo, hot. So this is the fuse and stick. And it's lovely. It's absolutely lovely stuff. So let's have a look at it. I just find it's really handy for complicated shapes. And it, it's really nice. So it has the shiny section you can see and that's you put your fabric on that and iron it down and then you peel off the paper which is really cool so then you have a uh, nice flat the whole bit which is really nice take note though that when you're using it on your cutter machine your cutting machine that this paper has to be up if you put this down it'll stick to it ask me how i know actually don't ask me it was it was a catastrophe <laughs> for beth, sure beth says your iron is cute does it require water and do you like it no water it's cute it heats up pretty quickly but uh isabel thank you um there's no heat there's no heat there's no steam on it and you can see how small it is uh, perfect for in the hoop that's basically what I use it for and I'm going to show you guys a couple of scenarios how I use it so uh, handy for that I love it I absolutely love it
but it doesn't replace a full iron because you need that steam and you need a little bit more ironing real estate than this little guy. But in the hoop, yes. Or doing these, yes. So the sticky bit is going to help quite a bit what with placement. And what we want is to have the applique nice and flat. So these two things are going to help with that. Although, you know, there's other solutions for sure. There is heat and bond, which I couldn't find. And the stuff I did find fell off my table at the beginning. Oh. So <laughs> nah, I'm not going to crawl under the table to show you. Um, that helps too. And that is just like a film of glue on the back and you have to iron it to keep it flat. So this would be an in the hoop thing. This is the ironing pad. Uh, you could see I use it a whole lot, but it comes, you have to buy it separately, but the smallest one. And I will plunk my hoop down on it and then iron it down like this very carefully. So uh, kind of awesome. So sticky on the back with uh fusion stick from dime or heat and bond easy as pie another thing you can do just to make your fabric sit a little straighter or thicker this is fusible no show web so it's cutaway stabilizer and you can simply iron your clamshell right on it let's pick up a nice ombre piece see you got to put the i don't know how well you guys can see it but this side is dull this side is shiny so shiny side up is where the glue is and this is where my little handy dandy little guy comes in because you just need to press it now always remember when you are using any kind of fusible anything that you're not ironing it you're pressing it see how nicely my iron fits in there isn't that great so it's not this kind of a movement you need to build up the heat so you press it i mean i'm exaggerating the movement right here but press it so it's not an iron go very slowly move it that sort of thing that's how you get it done so another reason why this little guy's handy i've had it for years and i love it um and that's fused on you know obviously better to do it before you cut your shape but you can do it like this as well um i i've done it see i just hand trim it and just sit there and do a whole bunch of them and then you have everything ready so this was an afterthought shall we say so an afterthought you could still do it i mean it kind of defeats the purpose however your clamshell is still going to be perfect uh and it's easy to do like this and you can see already that it makes it a bit stif stiffer it's a lot more body to it like it'll stay flat because that's remember that's what we want and you should always iron it from both sides. Press it from both sides. I said the wrong word. So we're pressing. I almost have this one done. But you see how nice and flat that's going to be? So that's important. That's going to help. If that's all you have, that's going to help. Of course, you can just use regular fabric. So that's two different ways. So let's put a regular fabric one up here this is the die cut ones so nice and flat this is nice lovely uh cotton and die cut so there's hardly any fraying and the whole bit um it'll work the only problem is oh jill thank you very much every little bit helps you guys it's awesome um if you are off a little bit this is what's going to happen it's going to move the fabric and you're going to have a little bubble i am not above um picking it out a little bit if it's right off just you know if you get this far 
uh, picking, stopping the machine, picking it out and fixing it um, because it's not going to look right if it's bubbly. So yeah, uh, I, I don't have a problem. So let's talk about one more. Now this is a product from Gunold and I ended up getting a ton of it. So I'm basically just using it. It is uh, kind of cool stuff. It's called Goody Stick. I'm not going to say I recommend it because it's stupidly expensive, but I'm sure other companies have uh, similar things. So what is this? This is sticky and sticky. So once you peel it off, it's sticky. You can cut with it as well. You just have to be careful about the sticky. So when you put it in your... Uh, cutter it's kind of a little bit different so I kind of tend to do it afterwards so there we go and make sure you don't use your good fabric scissors so I mean it's easy enough to cut it out and I had to do a little bit of trimming anyways because this is a die cut one and you don't want these matching triangles there to uh, you know stick out you want your satin stitches to be really good so that's that's yet another way like I said basically I have it so I'm using it it basically has the same effect as the good dime stuff except for you're not ironing so you know same sort of thing it's okay we can deal with it and it's like the other stuff there we go you can see the shine it's got a good stick so both of these are re-stickable so if I stick it down here see how flat it is and that's the wrong position I can do it again so that's it's super handy for a complicated shape um, it helps a lot with getting placements so those are my ways now I had to do this this is kind of nasty <laughs> a little bit nasty this is the terial magic that everyone talks about that they think is really cool it was kind of smelly to put on it discolored my fabric and it's stiff which is what you want for an applique um so ugh, i don't know how well it's gonna work we're going to try it though. Let's put this in the test. So we've got the Goody stick and we've got the Fusion Bond. I might use little ones on it. Oh, and the interfacing. And yes, you can iron the uh, fusible cutaway on the back of your fabric and then cut it out. You usually get a better cut. So you can. Even in a die cutter, you can do it that way so um it makes it nice now let's talk about things you can do to up your applique game so you can use fabric gorgeous fabric um decorative busy fabric this is a lovely ombre solids go a long way for sure solids go a long way and look nice um, but you can up your game even more by using different kinds of things. So this is one of my favorite things to do. And it's a scrap busting dream. So sew all your... Oh, Carolyn says, Terrio Magic smell affected my asthma. I was not impressed with it. The only reason why I have it um, is because everyone said how amazing it was, blah, blah, blah. But I'm not impressed. So just saying, I wouldn't buy it otherwise. I think there's much better ways of doing it. So, okay, we want a half, a half one. So you can also, by the way, you can also simply print out a template and cut it so I'm going to use my pretend this is a piece of paper or you can use other ones too and you want to cut it so you can fussy place it I would like all of these things showing it's almost a full one 
it's just not quite no that's not going to work but i think that's a super fun way to use up your scraps and you just happily sit and sew them it doesn't have to be perfect and look with a template this is pretty easy to do i'm using really sharp fabric scissors and uh, it's just kind of fun. It adds a little ragtag variety to your applique. So, I mean, waste not, want not, right? For sure. So this isn't quite a half, but I can cut it that way in a sec. So isn't that cute? There we go. Isn't that cute? Now this is where, because I only want a half for this one. It's a, a bottom one, but doesn't that look fantastic? I love it. So it's got all the pieces in and the little base part. When using a cutting machine, should the fabric be on the upside or the paper side on the upside? It doesn't matter. If you are doing fabric, you can do it either way. If you put on a, a backing say the goody stick for example uh always put it facing up because there's a chance that this is going to stick so you want your fabric and then you want your whatever kind of backing uh it just makes it easier in the end so uh hopefully that answers the question so now all i have left are little itty bitty pieces and i feel pretty good about that so sew your pieces together if you were doing a b quilt this is b fabric uh you could have the solids of everything and then you could have a couple of um mixed ones you know you know so it, it's just another fun way template that's all you have to do it's easy uh here's another thing that people think is a big secret but it isn't you can go to Michael's, for example, and you can get, look at this, Cricut, I got it all on sale, Cricut iron-on. So the key is iron-on. And then you can do sparkly appliques. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> uh, there's a little trick with it for sure, but you can get sparkles, you can get holographic, you can get so many things. I'm just going to cut a little slice of it. Now, you can use this in your cutter. That's kind of what it's made for. Uh, so it's pretty easy to do. And leave it just like this before you get started. But there's two sides to it. So there's this side and then there's the shiny side. So what you want to do before you put it down on your applique is you want to peel the plastic off. And uh, apparently it's not as easy. You can use, uh, I can't seem to get it. So I bend it a little bit and that usually loosens up the the corners is it embroidery proof uh what do you mean <laughs> it's what everyone you, uses you no because you're having trouble with the back oh is well it, it's, it's because i'm live that i'm oh. having trouble with peeling off the plastic it's not that hard to do it's just because uh i do it at live oh my gosh really <laughs> it's says it matches I have kind of groovy nails today for sure. Um, the colors you can get, oh, it's it's fine. Now, one thing with this stuff, I don't think you want to do a huge, a huge applique with this. Um, and it's also iron-on, so you really have to... Ah, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I can't get it. I just wanted to show you guys. Let me pull it closer. That was my frustration noise, by the way, just in case. No, it's just not going to work for me today. You can see me off in the corner <laughs> <laughs> for answering Anna Lakeman's questions. Beth, thank you. We have tons of ideas still. 
Okay, well, I can't get it. Anyways, you separate this part, which is clear plastic, from that part. And if you're doing regular applique, we're going to start calling it. Lynn says, I heard you all the way over here, Sue. I know. <laughs> it's because I'm live. Uh, you would. So when you peel the thicker plastic off, and please don't forget to do it. It's kind of useless. Uh, score it with a pin. Yeah, I could do. But if I keep fighting with it, I'm never going to get the rest of this done. So we're just going to call it. It just comes off and you don't need the plastic. So you would put it down and do your tack down stitches, cut it out, and then iron it. And it is a press, again, not an iron. So you're not getting the wrinkles out of it. You're pressing it to work with so i would think you know you could do smaller clamshells with it i think it's gonna look fantastic so it's just kind of fun stuff to play with it's not that expensive but it kind of works well enough so that's fun that is super fun so another thing you can do to kick up your your applique is why not add a little bit of organza i'm gonna have such a mess so you go from yellow ombre which is beautiful is it washable if you use the glitter yeah vinyl? it's exactly what you put on a t-shirt so you can wash t-shirts right yeah so yes as long as you make sure you press it enough then it is yeah it is made for iron on you know t-shirts with lettering that's the stuff so yeah absolutely so look you can take regular fabric add a little bit of shimmer to it um and you pretty much have to cut this stuff in the hoop you could pre-cut it i've never tried i'm i'm not going to recommend it so let's check here look shimmer beautiful shimmer yeah it just adds it's an easy way to add to it now i have a little bit of a uh, tool which is not not quite as nice as the organza but it'll definitely add a different look to it so look at this you see that that is a super easy way of um adding you know a little change to it let's try the yellow and see see that's kind of pretty it goes kind of orangey but not i would cut from the opposite side the hard plastic is the carrier sheet yeah um yeah i know um, but I'm just talking for applique here that you don't have to. We're not talking about cutting it on the machine. If you just got a piece of it and you want to use it, then yes. The instructions for cutting it on a cutter machine come with the, the um, uh, rolls. So, but again, I was just talking about just using it for a little bit because you don't really want to use a ton of it so you could use organza it's nice easy to cut now what can you not use i'm going to show you what you can't use mylar why not <laughs> yeah because it's just going to fall off um True. for sure you can't because there are no mylar stitches over it so it's just going to rip out for sure for sure yeah. so no mylar as much as we love it unless i design something specifically for mylar so don't get confused with this stuff guys you can cut a little piece off like this then you can um you know do it the way i said take the plastic off put it down and then tack down and iron it that's what you need to know if you are using it on your cutter 
then follow the instructions and yes it's easy you weed it and it's easy so uh two different things there okay so what's next oh here if you're ever in a pinch and you're having a hard time this is this is double-sided tape and it'll work it's not i i mean it's kind of fiddly stuff it's not rounded <laughs> it's not anything like that however in a pinch to get a good looking clamshell i would use it and i just have this thin stuff which i find is quite helpful so you want to just plunk it around so there's uh two sides it's basically the goody stick or sticky stuff um in strips so it can be handy so this is all you have to do and it's just gonna give you that little stick to it and you know it's it's removable movable the whole bit in a pinch i have done it and it's just fine and it's pretty helpful so yeah it's cool it'll work so that's just something you could also use um spray which not everybody likes i forgot about it the temporarily temporary um positioning spray it's not it works just fine um you have to be careful how you put it on because it it can change the color of your uh fabric so you want to be careful of that you want to spray it away from your machine because uh yeah you don't want it in your machine and it'll probably muck up your um hoops a little bit but they're easy to wash but this is a good standby um it works and it's just fine you can use glue glue sticks i didn't pull yeah. one out chris yosa she uses the elmer's yep washable glue, washable glue sticks. uh yeah you could just use a glue stick i mean that's easy enough you could also use uh this stuff i love it <laughs> i use it all the time for so many things especially on mug rugs or you know bags that you have to fold something under and get it to hold this stuff is awesome you want to use just a little bit of it it's designed for sewing not so much embroidery but i have done it just a little bit but yeah elmer glue yeah why not why not eileen roche uses it all the time it and it it's helpful and it works and it's easy to get and you get that little stick and the flatness that we want the whole bit so different types of glue just be careful you know i'm not gonna highly recommend anything so what's another thing you can do if you have this plastic and it's kind of thick plastic you can have a ton of fun so what would I do with this? Well, it's kind of a confetti. So Anita Good Design does quite a few of these. I haven't really done a video on how to do it, but they have mug rugs and different designs. So you can take, so being conf confetti, you can take a um, paper cutter, you know, little butterflies or something like that and put them underneath and then this is going to stitch down and hold everything in but I saw this and I thought isn't that cute so for my confetti I am going to cut these little pom-poms off and make a confetti oh, so isn't that cute I just saw it Quick sitting there confetti. yeah and I just sit and cut them and they're awful cute and it's gonna go underneath and it'll be like little puffs of snow and I thought that would be awesome what else can you do well you can cut up little pieces of fabric of the colors that you're using and just randomly so this would be perfect 
for your little itty bitty scraps from your sewing together and just trim it and all the pieces are in there it, it, it really looks better when you're doing it but you know and they can move around and you would stitch around it so you know little little things super easy enough um great way to use up every every ounce of the fabric it really is oh yeah for sure and it's really cute so anita good design has some really super cute confetti designs they even have zipper bags made with this um with this plastic so uh it's a lot of fun so misha just made a good suggestion um you know we change threads a lot so i just grabbed some out of my thread bin all the colors and do that and let me just put my hand here see Doesn't that look pretty Hold that there, so man. yeah it's a perfect way of using it up if you have little pieces of rick rack you can cut the rick and cut the rack and put it in there uh ribbons i think little pieces of ribbons so you know what just about anything goes for the confetti style applique and i think maybe we should do a sew along on it because i think that would be so much fun awesome so many ideas right i know so uh let's see what else do we have oh well we have vinyl so this is different so this is heat transfer vinyl and you have to iron it on to make it work right um this is fake leather we can call it and sometimes they do and what an awesome effect it has for any applique so yes you can pre-cut it and you can do it on the cutting machine just make sure you have the right blades and the right settings you can cut it in place it's thick uh, but flexible and it should be washable but you know lady 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 jr4 goody stick for bonding applique yeah we went through that i have my goody stick i have a ton of it um you can put sticky stuff on the back to make it stay but you know what it's kind of got some weight to it and you know it's it's gonna hold it down but it cuts really nicely and really sharp this is also the stuff you use for um key fobs and stuff like that so it's nice to have some little pieces of it i quite like it and uh it's pretty handy uh hard to get around here but you know what isn't and the last thing i have to show you is something that i haven't used this was given to me years ago and it's angelina straight cut fibers mint sparkle and calypso blue and these are iridescent little fibers um it's kind of awesome so welcome to the world of angelina hotfix heat bondable fire fibers these hotfix fibers may be heat bonded together to produce a non-woven type of fabric oh that's cool yeah isn't that neat i know i don't know why i have not used it but i think that would be really fun don't put your iron right on it you need like a teflon kind of sheet um but i think that would be really fun to do so huh did i cover everything oh wait i want to show you guys something but wait there's more no oh. i'm gonna <laughs> show them a sneak peek you ready uh, okay we're ready because i you know kind of put all these clamshell things into effect and this is what's coming up for you guys what do you think wow. yeah is that awesome fishy fishy Thank there's you. there's obviously going to be more to it but if you could see that 
it's Isabel says, wow, my clamshell placement is not perfect, but almost perfect. And everything's nice and flat. Now there's a little puffiness here because there's batting underneath and that's what it's supposed to. Um, Carolyn says, too cute, but looks a bit fishy. I know, right? Wait till you see the, the crabs I did. They're adorable. So by perfecting this, and this is why I thought I should do a video on it, because it makes a big difference having your appliques look awesome there's nothing showing a little bit on this one for whatever reason um but this looks sharp clean you know the whole bit so this will be coming up right now we're still in into the kitty cats so i hope you guys will you know stitch out these kitty cats because it's super cute i'm gonna bring it up. i want to i want to see the different variations of it with the fabrics and stuff uh, yeah, Dawn and I are dying to see what you guys can do with it. So there's a lot of applique. This block takes the longest, but it's kind of fun. And it's easy because I did a lot of stuff the same color. But the little kitty cats are with the same dancing with dragonflies fabric. I did... The back dark. This happens to be absolutely all, the perfect fabric. All Thank the big stars are stitched, right? All the, uh, the big, applique. Using a starry background. Two appliques are. Uh, two stars are applique. The rest are stitched. So the bigger ones are, are all done by me. And it just happened to match perfectly. So these stars are further in the distance. And these stars are closer. The moon is made of dragonfly wings. So yeah, it's not, not green cheese. No, it's slightly green, but it's still on the same fabric line of, of this, um, dancing, dancing with dragonflies. And it just, I started off with the back and then I moved along and I did the background background clamshells with shades of gray because they're further away that was just me you can do them all bright colors you can do whatever you want with it these guys are smart and cool can you see this guy he's awesome um so hopefully when you guys go to stitch this out you have a few tips on you know what you need to do easier placement of these clamshells because I don't want anyone to get frustrated with it. Did I use King Star? No, I didn't. I was going to, but I wanted the focus to be on the cats with faces. So I used, believe it or not, this is just gold thread kind of, uh, I used different shades of it. So the kitty up top is kind of a lighter color. One here is medium. This looks really yellow, but it's a shade darker. So, and their tails are matching. See, this guy has a slightly different brown for his tail. I love the swirly tails too. So yeah, I wanted to give you guys, uh, you know, a few tips and tricks applique for the clamshells, but also for uh, any applique shape. You want your applique to look just like this purple kitty here. He's really well done. Um, the puffiness right here, it's not puckering or anything like that. Uh, it's it's not perfect, but it's really close. It makes a big difference having everything flattened down and looking good. That looks kind of like a gross green. <laughs> oh, speaking of green, we could go to this guy. Look at Sleepy Kitty with big glasses on. He's cool. He's awesome. Yeah, he's cool. I love it. Is that cool? So, uh, beautiful gold shades. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Um, I was going to do blingy kitties, but I controlled myself. 
Jill says, I've just purchased the design today and this will spark my need to embroider. Awesome. I can't wait to see what you do, Jill. It's yeah, so much fun. Um, there's only six blocks to it. It'll take you a bit of time. I'd like to point out that the quilting in the background of the night sky is perfect for variegated thread. The way I've digitized it, it's a certain way. So it's all got movement. So if you use, you know, kind of plain fabric, mine is very busy, use variegated thread and you will love the way it turned out. Um, also, you can use it on the clamshells and they'll be striped. So, you know, that's kind of fun too. So grab this. It is only $10 and it is some great digitizing super cute design and I think you guys will have you know a ton of fun stitching it out I know I did um I can't wait to see what you guys do with this and I'll be checking out your applique to see how well you guys have done now it takes a little practice to do these clamshells so be patient for sure um my last tip of the day when doing clamshells when you put your clamshell down and you think you've got it pretty well and it does the outline, that's when you need to trim it. If you forget, it's when the zigzag goes on it and then you can still trim it. So yeah, don't, don't uh, you know, throw the whole thing out because it's off. You can fiddle around and fix it. So better appliques better final designs even with a more difficult shape like this clamshell and um yeah i can't wait to see what you guys know i think marilyn patno has stitched out a few that i've seen but i can't wait to see what you guys do with this it's so awesome so have fun if you have any applique questions uh head on over to the oml embroidery university facebook group and ask away lots of options lots of ideas these kitty cats would look awesome with a little bit of organza over them too so um space cat chris yo says <laughs> i need space cat fabric for this yes you do oh, that would be awesome. Betty Turner just purchased this. All right, Betty, I can't wait to see what you guys do for sure. Um, so, yeah, applique. Let's get beautiful applique. There is nothing wrong with trimming it in the hoop as we normally do. There's also nothing wrong with pre-cut. There's also nothing wrong with die cut. So whatever you prefer to do, I tend to, um, you know, change back and forth like for example for the half or quarter ones i trimmed it in the hoop because it's a lot easier than trying to place it so you know whatever's easy the instructions have all the details you need to know tips and tricks the whole bit so thanks everyone for watching i hope you guys like this video please like this video Please perfect your applique. It doesn't have to be perfect, but get it the best that you can do and you'll have better designs. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye everyone. Bye. Midnight kitties.